Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer on Friday the 2nd of June. It's lovely to have you joining me this morning. I'm going to be using the words from the Book of Common Prayer today. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come. Let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is the Lord, our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. One of the psalms that is allocated for this morning is Psalm 10. Why standest thou so far off, O Lord, and hidest thy face in the needful time of trouble? The ungodly, for his own lust, doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the crafty wiliness that they have imagined. For the ungodly hath made boast of his heart's desire, and speaketh good of the covetous, whom God abhorreth. The ungodly is so proud that he careth not for God, neither is God in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight, and therefore defieth he all his enemies. For he hath said in his heart, Tush, I shall never be cast down. There shall no harm happen unto me. His mouth is full of cursing, deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is ungodliness and vanity. He sitteth lurking in the thievish corners of the streets, and privily in his lurking dens doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are set against the poor. For he lieth waiting secretly, even as a lion lurketh he in his den, that he may ravish the poor. He doth ravish the poor, when he getteth him into his net. He falleth down and humbleth himself, that the congregation of the poor may fall into the hands of his captains. He hath said in his heart, Tush, God hath forgotten. He hideth away his face, and he will never see it. Arise, O Lord God, and lift up thine hand. Forget not the poor. Wherefore should the wicked blaspheme God, while he doth say in his heart, Tish, thou God carest not for it. Surely thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest ungodliness and wrong, that thou mayest take the matter into thine hand, The poor committeth himself unto thee, for thou art the helper of the friendless. Break thou the power of the ungodly and malicious. Take away his ungodliness, and thou shalt find none. The Lord is king for ever and ever, and the heathen are perished out of the land. Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the poor. Thou preparest their heart, and thine ear hearkeneth unto to help the fatherless and the poor unto their right, that the man of the earth be no more exalted against them. 
Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Old Testament reading that is set for this morning is 2 Chronicles chapter 22, verses 10 to 23. But I'm going to continue now with the Tadeum. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabbath. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true and only son. Also, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up for ever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. And the New Testament reading that is set for this morning comes from Romans chapter 3, verses 1 to 20. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid. For then how shall God judge the world? For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not, rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm what we say. Let us do evil, that good may come, whose damnation is just. What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. 
they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulchre, with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them, who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant, David as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high have visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the King, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. 
Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. God, who has at this time didst teach the hearts of thy faithful people by the sending to them the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you this morning with our world and its troubles on our hearts. We continue to pray for Ukraine and for Russia and we continue to ask for peace between those two countries. We pray for the governments of both of the countries that they may be able to get together, talk about their disagreements and that they should come to a just and righteous peace. We remember the countries of Turkey and Syria in the aftermath of the earthquakes. We continue to pray that aid is getting through to the right countries and we pray for those governments that they may be able to rebuild the infrastructure in their countries. Father, we pray for all places that are suffering because of weather conditions that are extreme. We think especially of the floods in Italy. Father, we pray that there may be ways that we can slow down global war warming and that these threats to people's safety and livelihoods will not remain as bad as they are at the moment. We pray for all of those involved in the clearing up after these events. We pray for our own country, our government, as they continue to deal with many problems and troubles. We ask that you would guide our leaders, that you would help them to find the right solutions. Uh, 
as they try to tackle many people trying to get into the UK in, in small boats, which is so dangerous and life-threatening. We ask that a fair and just way of caring for those who are refugees may be found. We ask that you would guide our leaders as they try to sort out the cost of living crisis. As they look for a fair way through giving people more pay, better conditions. Father, we know the money has to be found from somewhere. We ask that you would guide them to be fair to all. And Father, we continue to pray for our town of Rayleigh. We pray for all of the people who live in Rayleigh and those who work there. We pray for our schools and the young people at this time of examinations. We ask that you would help them to do their best. We pray for teachers and head teachers, all those who work in the playgrounds, looking after the children, the lollipop gentlemen and ladies who help them to cross the road on the way to school. We pray for our care homes. We pray for the residents and the carers. For our GP surgeries, the doctors, the nurses, the receptionists. We pray for those who care for us, the the police who help to keep us safe. The fire engines and fire department. Firemen. Paramedics and those who drive the ambulances. Our hospital. The surgeons, the consultants, the nurses and all who work at the hospital making people well again. Father, we pray for our churches in Rayleigh, for the ministers and the congregations who join together to bring your kingdom to our town. We pray for all of those who are unwell at the moment. Those in hospital having treatment, those awaiting treatment. Those who need your healing. And also this morning we remember those who've been bereaved, maybe recently, or maybe a while ago, and they continue to miss their partners, their friends. We ask that you would comfort and strengthen each of them. And finally, Lord, this morning we pray for ourselves as we begin this brand new day. 
Help us to follow the path that you have laid out for us. Encourage us in the difficult things. Strengthen us for those things that we worry about having to do. Keep us safe as we fix our eyes on you and on following your path. Father, we thank you for listening to our prayers that we've brought before you this morning. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Thank you for joining me this morning. It's been lovely having your company. I hope you have a lovely day and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. God bless. Goodbye.